Lecture halls. Enthusiastic professors have you students. Not anymore. Halls got empty and students switched to distance learning, which isn't new and it works if you can fit your students into one screen. But reality is different. Professors can browse all screens, students close their cameras, and you end up with more than a hundred faceless silent students. And behind closed cameras, students get bored, disconnected, distracted, and eventually break down. Now, let's talk business. We'll be introducing EduGaze, a product that improves distance learning through real-time focus and emotion detection. We'll walk you through every step from ideation and market research to the technical design of our product. First, let's start by asking what's wrong? What's wrong with distance learning? There is a clear miscommunication between instructors and students. Students' emotions and focus are not communicated properly, and if they choose to not open their cameras, they're not communicated at all, which is usually the case. So, how can we solve this? Well, we will be automating emotion monitoring process by using deep learning for real-time detection of students' emotions and focus levels. But don't just listen to us, listen to the market. In a recently released report analyzing students' behavior last year after COVID, it was found, it was found that 13% of US college students are not satisfied with online learning, with a 10% increase from last year. 30% prefer to return to campus even during the pandemic, and there is a projected 25% of students failing courses. When we limited our target group, it didn't get better. 53% said that they are constantly losing focus during online lectures, and 37% said that they can't communicate that to their instructors. Even though instructors and students want the same thing, they both need understanding indication, break reminders, emotion detection, and an overall more interactive learning experience. It was clear to us who our users are. We have students who want to interact more and communicate without being on stage, and we have instructors who need students' constant communication participation. And since distance learning is here to stay, any improvement would mean more efficient lectures, better communication, and an overall better well-being. Any attempt would be welcomed, any innovation would be needed, and any solution would leave an impact. Before we dig deep into our solution, let's see where we stand. When it comes to a college student using a distance learning platform, there aren't that many options. Either they will go with a more gamified product targeting school level students, which tend to be distracting, or a business solution that is effective for quick professional meetings, not lectures. And so, AI? Where does it appear in education currently? Well, it's mostly limited to cheating detection and assignment grading, and that needs to change. Let's talk about what we are offering. We have a very specific scope. We are building our application so it can be more accessible. We are targeting the live session portion of the lecture. And our initial target group is college students. We have an even more specific philosophy. We want to make use of AI. We want to build a minimal and effective interface. and. We are not pushing the whole processing into one place. How does such a product look like? Our first and main feature is the real-time detection of students' emotion, then collectively sending them back to the instructor. We have two additional features like in-class polls and an interactive Q&A board. So, how are we different? We are the first. We are the first product that uses emotion detection into video conferencing that targets college students. We also have access to our users of instructors and students. We are also a part of our users because we are still students. 
We are up to date to the newest tools like Zoom's fully customizable SDK that was released a week from the date of this recording. So this is the machine learning or ML architecture which we chose to use. We will use a face detector which will detect the faces from the webcam feed. Then the output of the detector will be passed to a pre-trained CNN model which will then detect the emotions. A CNN model is based on the visual cortex of the human brain and it is used for image analysis because of its high accuracy. The image on the right here shows the architecture of the pre-trained model which we have chosen to use. The dashed or dotted rectangle shows the depth-wise separable convolution part of this model. Depth-wise separable convolution provides high performance for a CNN model because it reduces the number of computations and decreases the number of parameters, as we will now see uh, how. A normal uh, convolution operation goes as shown in this video. A kernel or filter is passed through the entire image and it this gives us an output of one channel. But when we want to extend or incre increase the number of output channels, as we will now see, we have to repeat this operation as many times as the required number of output channels, which is wasteful. But depth-wise separable convolution offers us a solution. It consists of two steps. Depth-wise convolution, which we will now see. The channels of the inputted image are separated and a special kernel is assigned to each channel as this video has shown us. Then the output of each one of the kernels are stacked together, like the three outputs in this video are stacked together and passed to the next step. But the depth-wise contribution step, this step, occurs only once regardless of the required number of output channels. The second step is called pointwise convolution. Here a single kernel is passed through the stacked output of the previous step. This step pointwise convolution uh, is repeated as many times as the required number of output channels. Now let's see the phase detect. We chose to use the tiny phase detector because it's fast and small in size and we need something to run fast in real time and to provide us with instant results. This is the sequential fully CNN model which we have chosen to use. We chose it because it's fast, because it uses depth-wise separable convolutions which we have explained already and because this model does not contain any fully connected layers or FC layers, the model sacrifices a bit of its accuracy, the price for the speed which we need because our application has to run in real time and provide instant results. Its accuracy is 66% which was an acceptable price or at least for now. And the FER13 database, this is the database on which this model was trained. And this is a snippet of the paper from which we obtained this model. And now, here is the architecture of the whole system. And how would the machine learning model fit in? We decided to go over the microservice architecture because it is easily scalable and it's suitable for the continuous integration, continuous delivery concept, an agile methodology which we will follow. It also allows for rapid innovation and development. That's how such an architecture would look like, and we will explain each microservice briefly. The emotions analysis microservice receives the emotions from students in each session. After processing the data, it provides them in the form of collective statistics to the instructor. The meetings microservice is responsible for talking to Zoom API, allowing instructors to create and manage sessions, and assigning students to sessions. The authentication microservice is responsible for creating and managing users, whether they are students or instructors. It also provides authentication tokens to all users. The logger microservice receives logs from other microservices, so we can analyze problems and fix bugs faster. 
That leaves out the API gateway, which aggregates the public APIs for all other microservices, exposing them as a single endpoint to the client. And here's what's happening at the client side, and it's quite interesting. Firstly, the machine learning model will be loaded on the client side, and will detect emotions from the webcam feed. The detected emotions will be passed to the emotions analysis microservice. After processing it, collective emotion statistics will be sent back to the client. Having the machine learning processing at the client side allows for privacy, because only emotions are passed to the microservice and not the whole stream. Hence, it has less bandwidth. Also, it's faster and it's decentralized because processing happens across all participant devices. So, how will such a project come to life? We have a set of predefined milestones, like the ideation and market research, which we finished in November, the technical design, which included a learning phase, the UI design, we're finishing that up, the minimal viable product will be released in May, followed by the official release in July. Our exact current progress is that we're done with the idea and technical design. We have the machine learning model integrated into a web page, which is tested and completed. And now we're off to do some magic.